Hi there, this is another video in which I'm going to solve a random lead call challenge for you. The reason I'm doing this is that I'm trying to spend some time learning how to solve those challenges and I also need to make my YouTube channel more active. I'm trying to just combine two activities in one, solving challenges and providing you with nice videos. Hope you enjoy that. Hi folks, that's as the second video where I'm solving different lead code challenges. And today we're going to have a little bit of fun with a bitwise operations. So the challenge that we are uh, having today is called Hamming distance. And the Hamming distance is the distance between two integers. So essentially that the number of positions at which the corresponding bits are different. So we are given two integers and we need to return the Hamming distance between them. Check this out. We are given two examples. First is x equals one and y equals four. So what's going on here? We have to change those numbers into the binary representation for uh, an example sake. Uh, they do it in a four bit style, but uh, obviously uh, the integer are going to be so to two bits. Uh, in real life. So, and then they're comparing, like, uh, for example, for one, obviously it's going to be this, for four is going to be that. And the distance here is two, because there are just two bits which are different. So far, so good. Let's go to the other example. Here is this. So x3, y1, and the difference is 1. The reason for that is uh, if you convert 3 to binary, you will get something like this. It's going to be 0, 0, 1, and 1, which is different only by this bit from 1. So it looks simple. We are also given some constraints which are pretty much understandable. Those are constraints, uh, minimum integer, which is zero for one signed integer and maximum integer value, which is two power 31 minus one. Again, nothing special about this. So let's see how we can solve this problem. Uh, to do this, we will need to use bitwise operation. And what we're going to do, we're going to essentially iterate through all the bits of our integers and compare them together, thus calculate the result. So what we need to do, we need to have some placeholder for a result. So that's zero. And then we are going from uh, zero to two, so for, I don't think we need index here. So for uh, something in range 32, what we are doing is we are calculating bits. So first bit would be x divided by two, actually getting the remainder of a division by two. So if this is zero or one, right? And that gives us a bit, uh, the last bit of the number. So that's the first bit. And the second bit is going to be pretty much the same equals y divided by two. Now we got those two bits. What we need to do is just uh, essentially, if those are different, we increasing the results. So what we are doing, if first bit is not the same as second bit uh, result, increase. And then uh, what we need to do, we need to use a shift right. So we are getting rid of the bit that we just created for both x and y. And then we uh, return the result. Return result. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, let's probably run custom test case. I believe that's going to be one and four. That should return two, if things are working right. 
okay so we got two which is promising let's try something bigger i don't know and this looks good enough to me okay yeah that's actually a little bit too much let's see yeah okay it looks like uh, our solution is correct so what we also could do is we could extract this to a function um just i don't know to make code a little bit cleaner so let's say uh get def get last bit and number to return number divide by two and now i believe got going to be a little bit more readable not everyone would agree with this some people would say that we are adding a penalty uh time penalty essentially because what we are doing we are calling a function which obviously creates some overhead and eats some extra memory but i don't think that's uh actually a big enough penalty to avoid readability i think get last bit is definitely better than division remainder of division by two uh, at least it tells you what the code is supposed to be doing we also i think can change this to something more fancy like using xor or something but i don't really think it's going to be a good idea i probably will add a little bit of formatting here so that's our step that's our loop that's our result looks good to me let me run the code again it's still passing so i think if i submit yeah that's get accepted so while that was fun task a short one as well i really hope that you enjoy that and well yeah see you around in next sessions